Oh, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it's my, uh, so, uh, I think, third time at the uh, iMoon. Last year I presented, uh, and uh, well, uh, right after that I was waiting for the next iMoon and hopefully a chance to present. Uh, so I'm back here, and um, I think at the moment we have only uh, Lynn and Wendy, who hopefully a few more will join. Last uh, Yesterday was my second session, so uh, yesterday we had some more uh, people. Uh, I've also uploaded the slides uh, in the presentation space. Um, oh, yeah, we have one more person. Uh, hi, Natalie. Um, so, uh, so it's going to be about half an hour uh, talk about this. And uh, uh, so, anytime you have any comments, uh, just post a message on the chat window, um, and we I might we can just you know, take the comment right then, or maybe in the end of the session. So uh, this is about formative assessment using Moodle quiz. Uh, I work for an international development charity called INAS, which is based in the UK. But I live in India, in a small town called uh, Pondicherry, um, in the south of India. Uh, and I, I got my MCCC a couple of years back. Uh, I also blog about Moodle now and then, uh, because it's just, I like to say some things now and then, and uh, blogging is a good way to do it. Uh, so yeah. Um, Okay, so this is um, about really the Moodle quiz, and uh, and the Moodle quiz is often used to build multiple choice tests. And uh, but this is, I think, at the outset itself, the multiple choice tests. In my experience, so much of this talk is really about my experience working uh, largely in an international development context for about more than five years. So in this, in doing this, uh, I don't work at a university. Uh, I don't work in a very formal context. Uh, so I found that attitudes towards uh, this kind of test vary greatly across uh, you know countries, even people, even the same or within the organization. Uh, so it's uh, so people don't know if, if that's the best tool. They don't know if questions can be created to uh, to test for the right kind of things. Uh, and there are concerns about teaching, uh, cheating. Sorry. Uh, and then there's high effort to create uh, multiple choice questions or quizzes, uh, but. This this talk is not really about it's it's sort of shifting the 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 stage to not talk about tests as a way to all of these you know many of these concerns are really okay to evaluate how do we evaluate what learners uh, know and uh, so multiple choice tests are the best thing but this talk is not about that it's about it's about focus using the Moodle quiz as a for a different uh, objective so uh, is uh, so an MCQ test uh, needn't be about evaluating what the learner knows, giving them a score and an answer key. This is how it is often used, uh, or it's often used in a summative assessment context, right at the end of a course. Uh, even in the MCCC that I took a couple of years back, there was uh, an exam, uh, a, a one hour timed exam on Moodle quiz, using Moodle quiz. Uh, yeah, it was a little uh, challenging, uh, but, but I did pass it, which is why I got the certificate. But that wasn't the only time quiz was used. There were also smaller quizzes during the, the period of the course, the training course for the MCCC, and that did help. Uh, uh, yeah, the summative assessment was quite a big feature of, of that, uh, of that uh, course, and I know it, it's sometimes scary to think that there is an exam coming up. Uh, so. Um, yeah, now briefly going over what is formative, what is summative assessment, you may you might already know this, but I try to put these things in my words, uh, I'm not really, um, oh, uh, Lynn, can you hear me okay? Okay, maybe I'll just carry on, uh, sorry if there's any background noise, um, India is a very noisy place, so, uh, okay, fading in and out. Okay, maybe I'll just speak a little louder. Um, okay, um, all right, so formative assessment um, is to help the learner find out what they have understood. Uh, so I've bolded the word learner. Uh, that's really my, what it's really about and assures learners that it's fine to make mistakes. It shouldn't create stress. It shouldn't be like, oh, I've got one chance for this quiz and I'm gonna get a score. And even if it's not, you know, if they say, yeah, yeah, take the quiz, but uh, and if they get a low score, you know, then they're going to be worried about it. So, um, and then uh, it results in something that the learner can build upon to to do further, uh, you know, learning. Uh, and it can be a step towards summative assessment. It's not to say summative assessment is bad. I definitely wouldn't say that. I like actually end of course examinations myself. 
it gives me uh, something to work towards and makes me feel like I, I can, uh, yeah, I want to do it well and get a good grade or a certificate. I like summative assessment, but uh, formative assessment is uh, sort of can lead to something uh, or can just be, you know, can just stand by itself. Now, summative assessment is the focus is, I feel it's more on the teacher. The teacher really wants to know what the learner has understood uh, at the end of the course. Because after the end of the course, after the exam, well, people go their separate ways. May, they would, uh, yeah, there's not much interaction after that. Um, there's an expectation of good performance. Uh, so even if there, in some, there is, there is something like a pass mark or there is, uh, there is one attempt or something like that. There is an expectation that learners have got to have to pass or to perform it well. And they have a, a limited uh, uh, kind of the, whether it's number of attempts or whatever, just keep using the Moodle terminology, but they have a, a you know, kind of a structure uh, uh, to, to the, where they have to perform well. Uh, it could, that structure could be very strict or even if it's a bit lenient, but that expectation is there. And then it results in something that the teacher can use to report on the course, to give grades, and that's it, the course ends. Uh, and the learners know, um, you know, what, how they've performed, but uh, do they get feedback? Can they build upon that? That's where not real, not so much. Formative assessment is better for, for them to build on, uh, to know, to, to take action on what, of finding out what they've learned. Anyway, so now moving on to the course I teach. So, um, so again, I, I'd like to say that I, I don't work at a university or at a school. For five years, I've been working in, uh, in an international development context. Uh, I work in, in Aspen, particularly the Author Aid Project, which supports developing country researchers in publishing their work. And one of the things we do is we run online courses in research writing and proposal writing. Uh, so the course in research writing, which is about how to write a research paper for publication in a journal, that's, it's, uh, there's a lot of demand for it because um, I guess if you, if you work at a university, you would know about the publish or perish culture. Academics have got to publish their research got to do research, publish it. Of course, it's supposed to be, it is part of the academic experience, but in developing countries, it's, uh, there are a lot of constraints and challenges in doing research and in writing and publishing it. So AuthorAid works really with developing countries, mostly in Africa. Uh, so it's now offered as a MOOC uh, because the demand has increased over time. Earlier, we would run small online courses for about 50 people or so. So we run it as a MOOC. So now that brings to the challenges about how do we evaluate, uh, how do we, how do we whether evaluate or how do we give some uh, help learners understand what they know because we can't give individual attention to everyone. So I've created the content for this course using a tool called EXE Learning because my organization would like to, uh, there was a requirement that we should create content that can be distributed in a standalone format and shouldn't be fixed only to Moodle. I was using Moodle lesson earlier, but I moved to EXE Learning. Um, and it has five sections, five weeks. Uh, so each section has a few lessons and then a check your understanding Moodle quiz. Uh, so this is the formative assessment bit that I'm talking about. Um, and there are also some peer assessment activities that I, that I use, where, for which I use Moodle Workshop. And I spoke about this one, uh, the making peer assessment work uh, last year, the I note last year, and that was also informed by the same course. So I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm using this course as a foundation to make more than one presentation. There's just such a, a big course these days, so much demand and um, so lots of opportunities to try new things. So this is about the course I teach, uh, and it's not accredited. There is no uh, university watching what we do or giving some CPD points. But yet yeah, people come to us because the AuthorAid brand is well known among researchers in developing countries. And it means something to them if they get an AuthorAid course certificate. That's really kind of how it works that uh, just I think the brand is takes it uh, you know, far. Um, but, it's, so we, but because it's not accredited, there's nothing very formal. So we have a lot of room to be uh, to experiment. Now, learner profile, this is the challenging bit that it's while the, having the freedom is nice, but the learner profile is just too broad. Uh, we have uh, lots of different kinds of people. They are notion, kind of notionally called researchers, but maybe some of them have never done any research. They're aspiring researchers. And they come from, uh, they've come from more than 60 developing countries. They do hold a bachelor's degree, but they may, uh, they're not so much comparable. So they uh, have different... Uh, while all of them have some, uh, you know, they work in English because the course is only in English, but there's also very you know, wide variations in English fluency across different countries. 
uh, reading skills, writing skills also, uh, and limited experience with online courses. And another problem is because the topic is about research writing, a lot of researchers encounter this when they start working in research, but they develop incorrect assumptions about how to write a paper, how to publish a paper. They uh, and then uh, sometimes hard, uh, so those they they've got to unlearn those things and learn the, the correct things. So. Uh, and of course, anyone can enroll. So even somebody who doesn't have a bachelor's degree uh, can enroll. We don't we don't monitor the enrollment. So it's it's very very broad. Uh, we've got to cater to. Uh, we've got to keep this in mind. Um, so uh, yeah. So now I'll I'll, I'll show you some um, uh, yeah a couple of screenshots of how the page the course page looks fairly uh, minimal. So of course these are sections um, course induction. Um, Discussion forum. Now, perhaps I'll, I'll uh, kind of expand uh, my uh, presentation. I'll fit it to the width, or, or yeah, just expand it because to see it, um, see it better. You can also expand the window, um, the presentation window. So yeah, this is uh, this course induction discussion forums. There are nine forums actually on different topics. So I put them all in one place, so uh, it's easy to access the different forums and. Uh, Literature review is the first uh, section of the course. There are a couple of um, uh, files or lessons, a quiz. Um, yeah, so now a closer look at the, well, what does the section contain? This is an example of the research ethics uh, a section in the course. There are three lessons and a quiz. There is also a peer assessment activity, but uh, when I took the screenshot, that activity had moved to the assessment phase, so it's not here. Anyway, this lesson, this, this, Presentation is part of the quiz. So, um, yeah, so this is a check your understanding quiz. Uh, so, three lessons followed by this. So, yeah, pretty, you know, uh, uh, yeah, it's not much there. Oh, what's in the quiz? Um, uh, I could, I'd like to show you the lessons also, but maybe that's for the uh, next year's IMOOT. Um, but uh, yeah, now I'm going to talk about the quiz. Um, multiple choice questions. All of them are based entirely on the course lesson. So this is, it, it's really at the level of recall, understanding. It is not at higher levels. So, well, it's, it's kind of, I'm not, I'm not like, um, you know, very proud of how these quizzes have been developed. I would say they're rather basic. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. Uh, and it, so I, because we, uh, this is, uh, you know, a, a nonprofit I work for, I'm, I'm the pretty much the main moodler uh, and I do a lot of things. I'm the site administrator, course creator, facilitator, and I'm also a subject area person for this. So I have to work with sometimes very limited time and kind of come up with something. So I came up with a basic quiz on, on just uh, you know, testing recall or understanding. Now, is it too basic? Um, it's something we could, we could talk about uh, in the chat. Um, uh, well, so I'd like to give some, uh, present some feedback that we've got from learners. So this is for a recent MOOC that ended. There were about 900 people who completed it. So the question was if you felt the weekly quizzes were not at the right level of difficulty or something like that. I know it's strangely worded, but there was a you know previous question so, uh, that kind of set the stage for this one. But I thought this, this is a question that contains a meat of the response. Uh, so most 84% say they were at the right level of difficulty. 10% uh, thought too easy, 5 say too difficult. So it seems okay. It seems like, yeah, it, the learners respond to it well. They don't think it's too easy or too difficult. Uh, but again, I'm not sure if if we can just close the chapter here for this. So I'll bring this up again. Also, that is there is this is a is, what is, can we really infer something meaningful from this from what the learners feel? Um, okay, so this is just a piece a feed, feedback uh, though, and it would um, yeah, indicate that learners think it's at the right level. Now, what is the most useful part of the course? Was another question. So here, it's a, people could select uh, multiple choices. Um, so 94% they said lessons, uh, so not surprising, I guess. And then 80% said quizzes were, were really useful. Uh, and some of the other things uh, were not so, I guess, uh, yeah, uh, hot for the learners. Peer assessment, we put in a lot of work to try to make this, uh, make it um, uh, work well. But yet ultimately they get feedback from their peers and some of them are not happy with that. Many people are. But anyway, so it does, uh, Look like the weekly quizzes are really, uh, you know, uh, they found it one of the most useful parts of the course. So that's also good. Um, all right. So now I'll, I'll move on into uh, some, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you exactly what are the settings I've used in the Moodle quiz to build this weekly quizzes. 
which or you know, check your understanding or formative assessment. Um, they all mean the you know roughly same thing. Uh, so I, I'm just sharing my experience. I don't know if it's the most pedagogically sound approach. Uh, and yeah, please be a critic. Uh, tell me what you think. Uh, point out any uh, flaws. I know there are flaws in, in the way this is, uh, you know, what kind of questions are there in the quiz. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking for feedback and I'd appreciate your thoughts. Um, some overall features. So as I, uh, they are the level of questions are really about recall or understanding. They're all multiple choice, but not any of the essay or, you know, uh, short answer type questions. Uh, I wonder, maybe there are a few matching square questions here and there, but, you know, kind of not too different from uh, the, you know, the conceptually from multiple choice, I think. Uh, yeah, so negative marking is there for um, incorrect choices in multiple select uh, and 10 to 20 questions in each quiz. So this is like the features of every quiz. Uh, um, now, some uh, a closer look at the settings. Um, so the quizzes, every quiz is open until the end of the course. Uh, there's no time limit. So the, I like the end of the course uh, availability because, of course, the other option is to close the quiz at the end of every week. But I thought that might uh, create some stress. Uh, learners might feel like, oh, they've got a deadline coming up right in the first week. And we, it's a MOOC and it's people come, they come to us without any, they're not part of our Moodle system or you know, structure. They, uh, they, they, they're just new and, they, they, uh, and I've tried having deadlines in the first or second weeks and it doesn't work. People are just, uh, they get flustered. Uh, they're not used to it. So, uh, so end of course, so give them time to settle into the course. Even if they're ca catching up later, they have a chance to take the quiz and they can make multiple attempts, maybe one. Uh, so I think I do like this, that it's open to the end of the course. Time limit, I'm not sure. Is it good to set a time limit or not? We have some other quizzes in the course for which there is a time limit. This I've opted to not set a time limit. That's uh, just, uh, I don't have a strong opinion on this though, but whether this is good or not. Um, okay, so that's one one set of settings. Uh, so this is all in the, if you've used Moodle quiz, you, you would have seen uh, all of these settings and even more uh, in the edit settings uh, page in any quiz. So it's really all from there. Uh, layout and question behavior. So, uh, uh, so uh, and also maybe uh, I uh, maybe I'll mention now only that it's unlimited attempts. So people uh, learners can make unlimited attempts on the quiz, which I'll show in the next uh, slide. So question order shuffled randomly. So every time they make a new attempt, they see a new set of uh, they see uh, a new order of questions. And I like to keep all the questions on one page because there are a lot of learners on our course. And I think if we have multiple pages, there is a kind of interaction that happens whenever they click the next button to go from one page to another. And I think might increase the, the load on the server. So I like to keep them all in one page. Question behavior. Um, so yeah, shuffle within questions. So um, yeah, there's a new order of choices within a question. Um, every time they take the quiz. And deferred feedback. So feedback is given, not immediately, but later. And even that, I've, uh, there is, uh, so I'm gonna talk about that right now. So grading attempts and review, uh, un unlimited attempts they get, uh, and then highest the highest rate is recorded. So let's say some a learner gets 90%. They're like, yeah, uh, they wanna aim for 100. And then they end up with, with 80% uh, because they you know, said chose another set of options. They don't need to worry as such because 90% uh, is the one that is recorded. So they're free to make uh, mistakes even beyond achieving the passing grade. Uh, so that's, I think, maybe the next one. So it's really how I would have liked to present everything on one slide. There is a passing grade, uh, which I've come to very soon. So review options. So this, I've set it up in a certain way such that after every attempt, they can go over, they can go through their attempt they can see uh, the marks they've got at the at at the overall level, also at the level of a, a, a question. Um, so specific feedback is whether they got a question right or wrong, but uh, they're not shown the right answer. Uh, of course, so they do get some clues about uh, okay, I got this question wrong, so something else is a correct option. At that level, they do they do see it. Of course, we could restrict it even further. Um, but I, I've just kept it a little more open. Um, and there's also, I think the overall feedback is perhaps, uh, um, yeah, that, that, that feature, I, I really find it useful, which I'll come to very soon. Um, I'll show you what kind of overall feedback we give. So this is during the course, immediately after the attempt and later. So we give a limited review. Then at the end, they can see whether they got it, whether they got it right, uh, whether what is the right answer. 
Um, so yeah, if you're going to use this, I would encourage you to try out different things. This somehow, after some experimentation, I have, uh, for me, this seems to work. I like this, this kind of array of settings. Of course, it's not, I'm sure it's not the only way to do this. Uh, so yeah, basically limited review of quiz attempts and answer keys available uh, after the course ends. Uh, there's a passing score. Uh, so this is, uh, I use Moodle 2.6, so I have to go more deep into the, the categories and items and select every uh, set of, you know, quiz, kind of the settings over there, and then put the passing grade. Uh, although I think in newer Moodle versions, the passing grade is right in the edit settings uh, page. Um, yeah, so here I use a passing grade of 80%, uh, which seems fine. It's, it doesn't seem too high, not too low. Yeah, so again, something to kind of, uh, I'm not sure if this is the best passing grade for a quiz like this. Um, all right. Um, so, yeah, overall feedback with grade boundary. So this is also in the quiz settings. Um, so here, perhaps you can maximize the window in case uh, to see it closely. Um, so grade boundary, um, yeah, it, it, so it was the first time I actually used the grade boundaries when I set it up and it, uh, I really liked how it worked. So when they get between 80% and 100%, they get this feedback that they've passed the quiz, right? So, um, yeah, and when they, uh, okay, yeah. Maximize didn't work for me, I couldn't see the second part. Anyway, so when they get below 80%, they get a, they get a message saying that, okay, sorry, you've not passed the quiz, you need to get 80%, why don't you go through the lessons again and attend the quiz? Um, yeah, so this is, what uh, how how the overall feedback uh, uh, what I've done there and um, so now I'm uh, so this is a summary of, of a learner's attempts on on a quiz um, so there's a real learner who took the quiz uh, last year last October so you could you could look perhaps closely at the at the, at the time stamp um, so the first attempt they completed it on 26 October at around 10 p.m. 10 near 11 p.m. And they got uh, 6.4. So they got this feedback that, oh, you're not passed the quiz. So they could even review it uh, and uh, see, you know, some level of what was, what they have, um, what marks they've got for each question, but they can't see the right answer. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, this person took the quiz again about 10 minutes later. Uh, and then, well, unsurprisingly, didn't do much better, just increased their score very slightly. Uh, so again, they get this message. Um, yeah, so uh, so the message also says you can re-attend the quiz any number of times, uh, but they must pass the quiz. Uh, so a week later, on uh, 2nd November, this time they, they took the quiz and passed it. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, they get the, the, the more uh, you know, uh, congratulatory message. Um, so this, yesterday, so someone at, the, at this talk who said that to uh, one thing we could do is to, to enforce a delay between one attempt and another, which is also something you can do in the Moodle quiz settings. I've seen it, but I've not used it. And I thought, aha, yes, I could do that also. I could, uh, I, uh, yeah, maybe give a day or two, uh, you know, enforce a delay between one attempt to prevent people from trying to pass the quiz by brute force. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so this is, I think, fairly, uh, I've seen a lot of people with, with such, you know, pay, uh, attempt, uh, reviews and they made more than one attempt to pass it so yeah <clears throat> this is a summary of how it looks for the learner what happened to one particular learner in one quiz so i'm pretty much near the end of the talk so these are some questions that i like to think about i've not arrived at any answers uh, so if you have any views please share them here or you can email me later. So what is the right level of difficulty? So as I said, uh, for a formative assessment quiz, I, I, I just use recall understanding fairly low level questions. What about higher level um, questions? Okay, I'm, I've jumped to the third point. Um, yeah, so I guess that, uh, yeah, I guess with higher level questions, the quiz becomes more more difficult or more challenging. So, and then the, the feedback itself, is it a good thing that learners say the quizzes are the right level of difficulty? Or does this, is this it's a bad thing. So maybe, you know, as a learner, perhaps they're like, oh, I passed the quiz or I took a couple of attempts uh, for, and uh, it is good. But uh, so they don't want to say it was too easy, perhaps, because maybe they, they have a, uh, um, yeah, or too difficult. 
I don't know, maybe they feel that it's the right level, but uh, does it really mean at a pedagogical, from a pedagogical standpoint, it's the right level? Uh, yeah, thanks, Natalie. So, uh, yeah, it is, it is reliable. I guess perhaps I'm being overly uh, you know, pessimistic or skeptical. Um, right, so, um, what else? Yeah, so the other, other kind of questions, uh, you know, um, and then would it make the quizzes too challenging? And already, uh, when I built the quizzes the first time, I thought, well, these are so simple or, or, or even trivial. I don't know what I'm doing. But really, the reason I, I made these quizzes was not the formative assessment is kind of a later realization. I, I did this because when we use the the um, exe learning content so i don't use this corm version it's just an html output that i plug into the course so then i don't know what they've done except perhaps just click it so i thought well, i need to know if they've actually read it even so it was really to kind of check whether they've read gone through the lesson uh, i thought anybody who just goes through the lesson is going to pass the quiz but it turns out it added an interesting dimension it wasn't a trivial dimension so um, yeah, so they do make more than one attempt. And yesterday, someone said that, uh, well, there's a lot of, you know, there's a big issue with reading skills. I don't know what context they were working in, but I know, yes, in my context, researchers in developing countries, you would think researchers would have good reading skills, but they don't, you know, especially online, a lot of, uh, depends on, you know, the reading background. So they're not paying attention. Maybe they're just scrolling through page after page of content. Um, yeah, so I would like to make them more, you know, introduce more kinds of questions, but it, seems to be working today um, yeah so so I'm gonna just read the one more comment from um, Natalie um, yeah yeah I, I do think uh, you know quizzes uh, uh, I'm, I'm at, at my organization I'm trying to convince people of the of the that quizzes are, are really uh, are brilliant uh, if they're run done right but generally initially a lot of people um, and I don't work in higher education, and I work with a lot of people from a, a social sciences background. So they think a multiple choice quiz is really dumping down the complexity of uh, of of life or of the subject. But I think well, it doesn't have to be that way. It can still be, uh, you know, can still reflect in a certain sense of complexity. So yeah, um, yeah. So th this is really everything. I mean, uh, the, these are things I think about, um, and yeah, good to know that uh, you know what you. What you feel as well, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, um, yeah. So, edtech is being often discussed only at the level of the tool level and not how it is used. And yeah, and even even the tools itself, people are not. Uh, a lot of people I work with, so people new to Moodle who would like to use Moodle, they they don't see they are they they are not aware of the tools. And even if they are, these just seem to exist in a vacuum. They're not. Uh, yeah, so they think of oh, tools, but then, you know, um, yeah, mapping it. So I guess, yeah, those are part of the, you know, it's a larger, um, the, you know, topic than of this, this is just one part. Um, yeah, so do you have any, any other comments? Um, I mean, I've pretty much reached the end of the presentation. Um, oh, so if, if you, uh, what about, um, Sorry, I have one more question. So, the first, do you think the questions should focus on application analysis synthesis? You know, in a formative assessment, is that a good idea? That's the last. Any, any final comments on those who are here? All right, great. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to check it out. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Okay. So, well, let's check out this website. Natalie has shared with us. Um, okay, yeah, I think that's that's it from me. Um, thank you all for coming here, and over to Wendy, perhaps. Yeah, thanks, Ravi. I was just sorry. I was just going to jump in um, and say thank you so much. That was so much. There was so much there to think about, um, and thank you. Your questions were really awesome at the end. I've got a lot of people thinking. Um, so, as I said earlier, if you uh, have any more questions, make sure you can use the forums to. To Ravi, and I'd love to ask you, um, and obviously, you put his details up there as well. Thank you, Ravi, once again. It's been fabulous to have you back. Thank you so much, Wendy, and thank you all for for, uh, for being here. And yeah, please use the forums or, yeah, or email me. So, thank you. Hope you have a good time at the rest of the conference.